Hello friends, good morning. Welcome back to our channel ALP Talks. This is your Lakshmi Bhati. Today we have uh, our guest uh, Tikpal Singh with us. He is uh, very good at uh, electromagnetics and DZA analysis. Our today's web interview topic is uh, DZA. Uh, uh, he, is, he is presenting one of the presentation. It's a uh, very informative. It's a. Uh, it seems a little bit lengthy, but if you want to know A to Z about uh, DZI analysis, uh, this is the latest trends. Everything is covered in that. There is no other thing is required for you if you want to get full understanding about DZI dissolved gas analysis test, uh, test and uh, interpretation and everything. Uh, he covered everything in this in this presentation. So if you are interested to want to, to know more about this, please watch this video. Uh, this video I planned in two parts, part 1 and part 2 and then question and answer sessions that is also like part 3. So keep watching. I am good, thank you. How about you? Yeah, just fine. Yeah, Enjoy Sunday. Yeah, nice, nice, very nice. Happy to see you. <laughs> yeah, same here. Yeah, I think first time I am so much seeing you. <laughs> yeah, we have a phone call we talked. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Very nice, very nice. Okay, good, yeah. So, how are things going on? Yeah, just fine. Tell me about Yeah, yeah, nice, nice. Good, good. Yeah, welcome to our channel, ALP Talks. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, good, good. Yeah. So, how is the corona situation and all at your place? Actually, it is comparatively, Vododra Varsar is quite safe. Oh, okay. Very nice. Number of cases are nowadays decreasing and uh, mm -hmm. I think situations are just not normal but uh, under control. Okay. Yeah, that's what we need. It should be controlled only. Yeah. Are um, you in Vadodara or? Uh, yeah, I am. In, yeah, I am Vadodara only. Yeah, yeah. Okay, okay. Very nice. Very so nice. working from home is going on or? Yeah, yeah. Working from home is going on still. Okay. Yeah, That's good. yeah, maybe up to this uh, year, in maybe three, four, three or four days. After that, uh, we are not sure. Let's see. <laughs> yeah, that was Christmas. Yeah, yeah, well, yeah, yeah. We are not celebrating that much, but it's okay. <laughs> we are participating. Yeah. Okay. okay. Yeah. So, shall we start now? Yes, yes, yes. We will start. We will start. Yeah. So, I think uh, I will start with the presentation first. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's good. You start with your presentation. Uh, uh, we can discuss in the presentation itself uh, whatever uh, questions I have. Uh, otherwise, okay. at the end also it's okay, no issue. Yeah, you start. Yeah, yeah. yeah be time. Before that, the uh, thing. Uh, just uh, we want to know a few things about you, your professional background and educational background and all. That's good because people are going to watch us. It's better if they okay. know who you are. So it's uh, your turn. Just uh, a few words so you can elaborate. Okay, you are going to upload this video on your channel. Yes, 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 yeah, yeah. Okay, okay, no issue. Yeah. yeah. So first, I will brief myself. Yeah, that's good. Proceed, yeah. Hello, everyone. Actually, myself, Dikpal Si Parmar, and uh, I am uh, from last five years working in uh, power transformers field as a diagnostics engineer. And uh, my current background is uh, mainly I am looking after the root cause analysis of the power transformer. Yeah. In root cause analysis, I am for, for 50 to 60 percent of my part is the dissolved gas analysis, DG of the transformers, and the secondary finite element analysis of the power transformer for electromagnetic solutions. So, my basic expertise is electromagnetic solutions and the DGA, SFRN diagnostic test. Okay. So, that's a small brief about me. Yeah, you are a doctor then for transformers. <laughs> yeah, thank you. <laughs> Yeah, it's like a doctor only yes, because, like, yeah. because normal testing people, they can, their role is different. Your role is different actually. You are a little bit closer to the, yeah. the health index of the transformer, health, particular health yeah. of the transformer. What they do is they validate the transformer as per design. Mm. And what our uh, field is that uh, after failure, we find out the root cause. What is the cause of the failure? Yes, yes, yes. You yeah. just go to the root and we find out it and uh, then again diagnose and correct it. That's it. Yeah, that's that's very important and interesting, challenging also. Mm -hmm. Yeah, nowadays it is very important. Yes, yes. Because the system is getting more complex. 
more number of transformers are getting more in. complex and we can avoid uh, our periodic maintenance we can go with preventive maintenance that's yeah, so that's that's important we can save huge cost yeah that's true time also now it is not necessary after uh, six months we can we have to maintenance we have to shut down our plan and do maintenance we can just uh, diagnose the data and uh, we can go for a preventive Sorry. maintenance if required maintenance is required then only we can go for maintenance yes yes, yes. that's true yeah 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 we will start now with our your presentation that's it about me yeah yeah, yeah. that very nice just wait i will share a screen yeah yeah you proceed yeah is it possible to share zoom yeah yeah is it possible you share it okay one share option will be there Uh, you are in mobile or uh, how can you tell me no i am using mobile but it shows message uh, pop up message that uh, only the host can share in this meeting oh yeah just let me i will check with i will check if i have any control yeah please yeah yeah, yeah i am checking multiple participant Yeah, I kept. Uh, everyone can share now. I think you can observe. No, I'll try. Can you yeah. check? Yeah. Okay. Yes. Yeah. Proceed. Yes. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yes. Oh, I think video will be paused now. Yeah, I'm able to see. Yeah. Yeah. Proceed. Right. So, right. Right. So for today is uh, your channel. The title will be the approach of the DJ interpretation technique mm-hmm. to diagnose transform fault. Okay. Okay. Mm-hmm. I already said about myself. My I'm, I'm Dipan Sipanu, and my expertise is uh, electromagnetic solutions and dissolved gas analysis of the particularly power transformers. Yeah. Yeah. That's true. Mm-hmm. Can you turn on your video so, if possible? I mean, it's good. Uh, yeah. No, actually, it shows it is not possible to share a screen and video. Oh, okay. No issue, no issue, no issue. Yeah, proceed, proceed. Mm-hmm. Good. Okay, so today's uh, presentation's contents will be we will go with some basic introduction of the dissolved gas analysis, mm-hmm. and after that, the normative reference. The reference based on the we go with the interpretation, fault interpretations, dissolved yeah. gas analysis. That normative reference. Then mm-hmm. some terms related to gases. Fault, which are related to particularly dissolved gas, dissolved yeah. gas. Yes. yes Every person yes. used in this interpretation. Yes. Yes. Then yes. mechanism of of gas formation. How gas will be formed in uh, any insulating material like mineral oils, uh, permaut ring, press board, craft paper. After that, fault interpretation method. Mm-hmm. Once we found out or measure gas values, then how to identify that fault limit and uh, from what kind of analysis we can do for interpret the uh, type of fault yeah yeah after that the typical value of gas consumption is defined by ieee and ic60599 yeah yeah basic uh, no- range of normal gases and abnormal gases mm-hmm. and after that we will conclude this session yeah sure so first what is the dissolved gas analysis mm-hmm. dissolved gas analysis means in in every power transformer so you can see electrical equipments where it is filled with insulating oil it generates or forms some gases so we have to identify that gas then measurement of the gas what what is the ppm value of the gases then interpretation of gases what kind of fault is there so combination of identification measurement and interpretation interpretation of gases this mm-hmm. dissolved gas analysis okay okay then mm-hmm. why it is necessary mm-hmm. why dissolved gas analysis is necessary then uh, see ambati what happen in every insulating materials like mineral oils permaut rings press board thermal yeah. graded craft paper nomex tape at at higher temperature if they are in a uh, mineral oil or any natural synthetic oil natural or synthetic oil mm-hmm. then at high temperature it forms or liberate some gases 
Okay, okay. The rate of the gas is produced, which is depends on exponentially on the temperature and directly depend on the volume of the material. How okay. much liters of oil you have used? How much kg? How much kg of the insulate other insulating material you have used inside the transformer? Actually, uh, DGA is a every electrical equipment which is filled with insulating oil. But uh, today's we will only discuss about transformers. Yeah, yeah. The this is the reason why we go for the DGA, mm -hmm. and uh, just like uh, DGA is interpretation result is quite complex. So I think or I suggest it should be always done with care and involving some experienced maintenance personnel or. Uh, Experience any R and D personnel for yes, the yes, analysis. Yes. Not only yes. we took the result and we put the value in any software. Nowadays, ready-made softwares are available for DGA. Yes, yes, it, I understand. Be... Yeah. Okay. Then next, normative reference. These are some five to six reference which are used or which I have used in my software to calculate mm -hmm. or interpret or diagnose DGA. So first, okay. I have used this IEC 6059, which is worldwide accepted. This standard tells our guidance on the interpretation of dissolved gas and uh, free gas analysis. Then IEEE 57104 and uh, SIGRE. So I will not much, I will not take much time on this slide. Yes, 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 yes. Yeah, you proceed. These are the five main standards you can use in any DG, any transformer DG analysis. Yeah, last one is which standard? Uh, the TF 15. Yeah, actually, last one is a uh, you can say superseded. Uh -huh. Superseded, okay, okay. I mean, is this IEC or uh, which country standard that? No, it is, it is a secret standard. Okay, okay, yeah, proceed, proceed. It may be transformed. This is the most uh, important. I am using this in my software. Okay, got it, got it. This, uh, I will discuss later that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. One okay. Yeah, proceed. Then some terms, definitions, the main terms are dissolved gas that we have already discussed. It is identification, measurement and interpre interpretation of gases, yes, which yes. are dissolved or formed inside mineral oil in any electrical equipment. Let's say a transformer or uh, any switch here. Yes, yes, yes. Then uh, DGA norms, that's fine. Electrical discharge for mm -hmm. It is, everyone knows any arcing or sparking creates discharge in uh, mineral oil or papers. Yeah, that is electrical discharge. Then gas concentration. When we measure measure gases in a power transformer or any electric other equipment, it is expressed in a microliter per liter, or you can say microliters per liter. Yes, and you can say ppm parts per million by oh. volume. Okay, okay. Then I think partial discharge and thermal fault. Everyone knows. No need to. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah. Then these are some abbreviations or you can say gases that we can found in a transformer. So okay. first hydrogen. Hydrogen is, a, you can say it is a stray gas. You always mm -hmm. found hydrogen. If some fault is not there, but you tra use transformer for three to four years, five to six years, then some amount of hydrogen will be comes. Okay. And that is fine for the transformer. Mm -hmm. and similarly, oxygen and nitrogen. In some amounts of oxygen and nitrogen, you always find in the transformer oil. Okay. Then we comes carbon oxide gases, which is CO and CO2, carbon monoxide and carbon dioxide, mm -hmm. which directly connected with your uh, paper insulation. Yeah. Decomp paper insulation decomposed, then CO and CO2 will be generated. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And then uh, uh, final and major gases are hydrocarbon uh, gases, HC gases, mm -hmm. which are methane, CH4, ethane, ethylene, acetylene. Mm -hmm. And uh, propylene and propylene, I think it is no need to discuss in at this stage. Okay, okay. So in today's discussion, we mainly discuss uh, from carbon monoxide to acetylene. Okay. And hydrogen. Yes, yes, yes. This is the main abbreviations or uh, num defined number for the fault by SIGRE and acceptable by IEC IEEE. Mm -hmm. So D, D1, D2, D is for electrical fault, D1 for electrical discharge of low energy, D2 is for high energy discharge, PD is corona or a partial discharge, 
T is a thermal fault, similarly T1, T2, T3. It is uh, categorized based on the temperature value. Mm -hmm. 300, 300 to 700 and more than 700. Mm -hmm. Then S is the analytical detection limit and TP is a thermal fault in paper. Okay. And the last year, Sigre 771 published one new standard. Mm -hmm. uh, categorized some more fault but uh, not given in detail. Only they have nomenclature it. So they normally ask for stray gassing for uh, of oil less than 200, O for overheating, C for possible carbonization of paper, and T3H that is for thermal fault in oil only. Previously, they have given T3 only thermal fault mm -hmm. in the paper or uh, oil that we have to assume on based on assumption. Yeah, now in figure they have classified T3H only for thermal fault in oil. Mm -hmm. So these are main abbreviations. It's always uh, that abbreviation is used in the DGA. Yeah. Okay. Next. Yes. Yes. Proceed. Then uh, this is the same PD parcel is D one is a. Here I have given some examples in what cases you can see parcel discharge. Mm -hmm. So I think uh, I will discuss this later on. It will be good. Yeah, yeah. So mm -hmm. PD, D1, B2. Mm -hmm. Similarly, T1, T2, and uh, I think it's T3, not T4. Yes, yes. I will give this example later on. Yeah, yeah. Proceed, you proceed. We will discuss. So now we go for mechanism of gas formation. Mm -hmm. So first, uh, the decomposition of oil. So, but what happens, mineral oils are made of uh, different kind of uh, carbon molecules like yes, CH3, yes. CH, CH, which is a chemical group and uh, bond of CC, carbon-carbon molecules bond, yes, together yes. with the hydrogen, H bond, only H bond. Mm -hmm. Then what happens if some, temp some fault uh, creates in transformer and the temperature of the transformer is, uh, goes beyond the designed value? Then mm -hmm. these HC molecules recombine rapidly through complex reaction and it forms the gases like hydrogen, methane, ethane, acetylene and the ethylene. Yeah. That's it. When, uh, for oil, we can say if oil temperature of the oils goes beyond the design value of the transformer. The mm -hmm. HC and the CC molecules do some uh, chemical reaction and generate gas form the gases of uh, hydrogen, CH4, and uh, et etc. et cetera. Yeah. So, particularly ethylene, you will see it's the thermal fault in oil and because of uh, decomposition of oil, the major gas is ethylene. If in your DGA result, ethylene is high, then you can say there is a decomposition of oil just okay. because of thermal fault. Mm -hmm. And the carbon particles, which is CO and CO2, also involved if temperatures goes beyond 500 to 800 degrees Celsius. This happens in the cases of arcing. Uh, you can in OLTC tank you will always find this because when OLTC taps are changed, some arc is produced inside. Okay. So in short, at high temperature you will also see CO and CO2 with ethylene. Okay. In the case of decomposition of oil. Yeah. Yeah. So next is the uh, oil and insulation cellulo cellulo cellulosic insulation, which is your uh, you can say press board, craft paper, TU thermally upgraded craft paper, mm -hmm. uh, any wooden blocks. Yes, yes. That, uh, the polymeric chain of solid cellulosic insulation contains a large number of N N hydroglucose rings. And uh, it weak the CO molecular bond of the mineral oils. Mm. And uh, which are thermally, you can say, less stable than the hydrocarbon bonds in oil. So at lower temperature, you will see the, the, uh, this kind of gases. Mm -hmm. For the, if your uh, insulation, paper insulation will be degraded, then it uh, forms CO and CO2 at uh, lower temperature only. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Okay. 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 Then next gas formation is the stray gassing. 
stray guessing or you can say some guesses are produced in transformer by default if some fault is not there transformer is uh, 100% healthy then then also some guess are you can see inside transformer but this is after some years of operations uh you can say 3 to 4 years or uh, max 5 to 6 years mm mm so in that case you can just uh, filter oil filtration and uh, this gases will be neglected mainly hydrogen is a stray gas for the transformer oil it mm-hmm. always you know, by chemical reaction with uh, some your top ring or some steel material mm or your paint is a protective paint that we pro- that we do to top yoke and the bottom yoke for every steel part if yeah. this paint is damaged then also hydrogen is produced just by chemical reaction with the steel and the oil yeah at some minor temperature not minor beyond 100 degrees celsius yeah then in mechanism of gas formation other sources of gas like uh, <clears throat> like rusting of the your steel part in the chemical chemical reaction involved in steel uncoated surface or uh, as i already said protective paint damages of protective paint yes. hydrogen gas for that have never energized as i said if fault is not there but hydrogen will you can see hydrogen is there this is because of h2 may produced by reaction of steel with water mm-hmm. okay we found some h in uh, your transformer oil and uh, there is oxygen so it creates h2 mm-hmm. and there is a reaction of steel with water and uh, you can say uh, hydrogen is separated from h2o and hydrogen will be there again oh. hydrogen production due to coating or paint reaction with water then uh, what happened when you welded at the time of manufacturing when you weld uh some i i have mentioned stainless steel but uh, you can say mild steel stainless steel or any cat type of ss at the time of uh, welded it absorbs some c2h2 acetylene gas inside okay. the material and this gas will be also liberated by the material at the time of a transformer operation so mm-hmm. it is not the major issue but sometime acetylene is also found by that is a uh, it absorbed by the material during welded process yeah if uh, and uh, other, another case is if your oil is exposed with uh, sunlight comes directly in, at the time of uh, filling in the transformer tank or on site uh, in case of shutdown the transformer oil is take outside and it again refill in the inside in inside transformer tank at that mm-hmm. time if the transformer oil is exposed to the direct sunlight for not for one or two minutes but for a long duration then also hydrogen will be produced inside the oil so these are some other sources of gas formation inside transformer oil okay that's it for the gas formation yeah now we will see fault interpretation method yeah so actually there are numbers of methods to mm. dg for dg interpretations i am mm. following i triple e i e c c gray and uh, my favorite is duals and sometimes rogers for typical and uh, typical cases okay. but uh, there are also other like kema has developed their own dga program then uh, abb has their own dga program yes 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 cvip have some defined then some super seeded are some dorenberg then uh, i triple i am discussing here and siemens also have their own program yeah so we will see today i triple i ac sigre and duals yeah yeah so i triple has defined single gas concentration mhm so for if you here in graph you can see if you found only c2h4 it is ethylene c2h4 is stands for ethylene if you mm-hmm. found only ethylene in your transformer oil in your transformer oil mm-hmm. at the time of dga then you can say it is a thermal fault uh-huh. common thermal fault but uh, it is not categorized it is a 
comes into T1 category, T2 category or T3 category. It just defined it is a T, thermal fault. And the principal gas for this thermal fault is ethylene. So reason behind this is decomposition of products include ethylene. And uh, it found with small amount of methane and uh, hydrogen and ethane. So ethylene will be your principal gas and uh, simultaneously will found methane and ethylene. In graph you can see. Yes, yes, yes. I think I can mark this, these gases. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Second, thermal fault in cellulose. Mm -hmm. For the cellulose, main principal gas is carbon monoxide. When, oh. when uh, you do DG of the mineral oil, and if you found carbon monoxide is uh, goes beyond its defined limit, then you end up uh, with a large quantity of carbon dioxide. Then you can say it is a thermal fault inside your cellulose material. Okay. And this, this is because of the overheated of the cellulose material. Okay. And in this case, we can find methane in the time will be found. You can say if CO will CO you can find carbon monoxide with carbon dioxide. In that graph it is not shown, but CO and CO2 will be there. Okay. With some amount of uh, methane and ethylene. Methane and ethylene will be always be there if it is thermal fault. But if it depends on the amount of the gases, PPM level of the gases. Okay, okay. So in key gas, table key gas method, third is partial discharge, or you can say corona. Uh -huh. So hydrogen will be principal gas for this reason. If you do DG of the transform oil and you found hydrogen is beyond its I triple or IEC defined limit. So you can say it is partial discharge. Okay. Okay. Yeah, in that yeah. case, low energy electrical discharge produce hydrogen with uh, methane. Mm -hmm. and you will you can found some minor quantities of C2H6, ethylene and ethane also. Okay. And uh, CO and CO2 will be there, but I don't think it is necessary for this particular this case. Okay. It is, in that case, you have to combine with your uh, that uh, thermal cellulose and uh, uh, parcel discharge. Yeah. Fourth one is the uh, arcing. For arcing, it is the uh, acetylene. In, in any case, if you found acetylene inside transformer, then you can say blindly there is the uh, arcing inside transformer. There is no reason behind, uh, there is no other gas behind arcing. Okay. If you found acetylene, arcing is there. That is, uh, you can say 90% you will be confirmed. Okay, okay. But uh, you have to note down that uh, in some cases what happened, your OLTC oil and the transform oil is mix up. Yeah. Um, somehow it mix up and at that case, acetylene will be there. Because in OLTC oil, that OLTC, OLTC compartment, you will always found uh, acetylene. Okay. Because what happened, OLTC always change their taps to one, two, three at any number of position. Okay. When it change the taps, there is minor minor spark will be produced inside the OLTC compartment. So that yeah. spark or arc will generate acetylene. So if you found acetylene trans uh, OLTC compartment, there is no need to worry. It will oh. be there. Okay. 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 In that uh, in case of parking, you will get large quantities of hydrogen acetylene with the minor quantities of methane and ethane, uh, sorry, ethylene, C2H4. And CO2 and CO will be formed if uh, cellulose is also involved. Your arcing will be near to your cellulose, but it will be discharged partially, partial discharge is there. So by okay. tracking or train effect, your cellulose will be going to damage. So it will produce CO2 or CO. Yeah. Yes. These are the basic uh, IEEE single gas concentration. Mm -hmm. After that, we will discuss IEC 60599. 
Yeah. I see it has revised three times. First product, first they have published in 1978. This mm -hmm. revised in 1999 and now it is 2015. Mm -hmm. Okay. I see they have defined three gases. Mm -hmm. First is a uh, methane and hydrogen, CH4, CH2. Second is a C2H4, C2H6. The C2H4 is ethylene and C2H6 is ethane. And third ratio is C2H2, which is acetylene. And C2H4 is again uh, ethylene. So based on the three, uh, well, number of number, uh, if you found, uh, if you do DG and uh, do the ratio of these gases, mm -hmm. you will find out like uh, some chart like this. This I have cut paste from the IEC. Yeah. Yeah, that the abbreviation we have saw, seen previously is PD D1 D2 T1 T2 T3. Yes, yes. Based on the ratio <laughs> value, mm -hmm. you can categorize the fault. Okay. If the ratio of is uh, greater than one, or CH4 CH CH4 and hydrogen is uh, in between 0.1 to 0.5, and the C2H4 and C2H6 is again greater than one, then you can say it is a fault D1 discharge of low energy. Okay. Here I have did some analysis and uh, yeah, do the ratio. Yes. Yes, yes. And in that I have found low energy discharge and thermal fault. Okay. So this ratio comes for D1 and uh, thermal fault. This is greater than 700, T3. So when I calculate this value, if we check discharge of low energy, Mm -hmm. C2H4 is 0 0.02, first ratio. C2H4 yes, yes. upon... Okay. Yeah. Similarly, CH4 upon H2. Yeah. And C2H4 upon C2H6. If you count this value, it, it, uh, beyond this uh, value, IEC defined value. So from I can categorize, it is D1 and T3 fault. Okay. Okay. Yeah. IC has given major three gas, uh, major three ratio. Mm -hmm. But from this three ratio, you will not, you cannot go into depth if some moistures are there or your cellulose, cellulose, your paper insulation involved. So to find out this later on, they have also discussed about this uh, ratio of carbon dioxide, carbon monoxide, which is less less than three. Yeah. Then, uh, your some DP value is uh, degraded. Mm -hmm. CO2, CO is degraded. It, it should be in between 3 to 10 in sort. If you are transforming this LD, the value is in between 3 to 10. Yes. Then uh, oxygen and nitrogen ratio. Yeah. Then uh, last one is uh, C2H2 upon H2. Higher than 2 to 3 indicates OLTC con contamination. Here, ratio is there, CH4 and H2. Yeah. And later, they have more categorized it to acetylene with hydrogen. Yeah, As yeah. I have said, your, uh, if transformer oil, transformer tank oil is contaminated with OLTC oil. Mm -hmm. You found C2H2 in your transformer oil, so you can say it is... Uh, arcing inside transformer. But after later on you go with the C2H2 and H2 ratio mm -hmm. and you found this value is higher than 2 to 3. Then you can say your transformer tank oil is maybe contaminant with OLTC. Not sure, but maybe possibilities that okay. your main tank oil is contaminant with OLTC oil. Okay, okay. So if you found arcing, if you found C2H2 is higher, then after that, you have to go for C2H2 and H2 ratio. So you can check or confirm if there is OLTC contamination is there or not. Mm -hmm. That's it for IEC. Yeah. And, uh, now, SIGRE. Earlier, mm -hmm. you said task for TF15.01.01. .01. Yeah. Actually, SIGRE has... Uh, first, SIGRE... In, invent this uh, ratio method and IEC has copied okay, the okay. method. Uh -huh. Cigarette uh, first in, uh, invented this 
they have defined five key ratios mm -hmm. which is effectively in each end if uh, this value is greater than one then there is electrical discharge electrical discharge then you have to categorize it in d1 category or d2 category or it is partial discharge okay no sorry it is uh, d1 and d2 low energy and high energy discharge mm -hmm. so sigre give you the electrical discharge is there but it will not describe it is low energy discharge or high energy discharge okay so for that to do for the analysis and second ratio is hydrogen and methane mm -hmm. if this this ratio is greater than 10 you can say there is a partial discharge okay okay mm -hmm. then third ratio is a c2h4 c2h6 this is ethylene and ethane if the value of c2h4 and c2h6 ratio is greater than 1 yes so the thermal fault is there Mm -hmm. for it is uh, nature of the fault it is t1 t2 or t3 to further categorize you have to do some more analysis that we will discuss later on yeah fourth ratio is the co2 and co carbon dioxide and carbon monoxide mm -hmm. the same icn it is if the value should be in between 3 to 10 mm -hmm. it is greater than 10 it shows overheating of cellulose it is less than 3 it shows the degradation of cellulose by electrical fault. It okay. means your paper insulation overheated. Yeah. Only greater than ten. But yeah. some arcing near by the your paper insulation, your wooden block, or your formout ring. Mm -hmm. Then what happen? It will be degraded uh, exponentially. Yeah. Okay. In that case, Less than three. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Some treeing effect in partial discharge case. Tracking effect that it's on wood or any paper, some image will, uh, some graph will be there like a tree. Yeah. So in that case, you found this, it is it's less than three CO2 and CO ratio. Okay. Last ratio is. Uh, Acetylene and hydrogen, it is also the same as the IEC. Mm -hmm. Contamination of oil with the transfer tank, then it, this value is greater than 2. Yeah. Okay. And this is uh, just a small example of the Seagray method. Mm -hmm. This is the 5 gas ratio, defi uh, defined limit Seagray and the uh, value. I have just yes, some yes. example. Yes, yes, put yeah. in the table and I found the ratio. The yeah. interpretation is the thermal fold and partial discharge is there. Okay. This is an example of a random transform. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Then dual triangle. Mm -hmm. From dual triangle, I just uh, memorized something. Uh, we are using Buchholz relay in every transformer. Yes, yes, yes. You know the basics of this dissolved gas is started by the by Mr. Buchholz. Buchholz was an engineer in England, mm -hmm. and firstly he invented gases inside transformer. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. He's thought that uh, this gas can we can interpret this gas and uh, we can use this as a diagnostic tool. Okay. So, okay. Buchholz was the main person who started involving in BGA of the transformer. Okay. okay. That is another thing. So, dual triangle. Michael Dual, which is the alive today, he is also doing more research in this triangle. Mm -hmm. This man started in 1989. He has first gives a small triangle and categorized this triangle into six different parts, which is again PD, D1, D2, D3, D3, and T1, T2, T3. Yeah. What he did, he took the main three gases, methane, ethane, and uh, acetylene. Mm -hmm. Based on calculating the percentage of three gases, what he did, he, he some of the three gases, just took the percentage of the gases. Mm -hmm. Total of the sum of the methane, ethane, and acetylene, and uh, divided by each gas and found, found out the percentage. Mm -hmm. Then he made a small triangle of uh, for methane, 
lower bottom line is for C2H2 acetylene and uh, it's N. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So he categorized this triangle from 0% to 100% on every side. Mm -hmm. And the concentration of the gases increase in clockwise direction that we will discuss later on. Yeah. Inside, yeah. The, inside of the triangle, he divided it uh, six different areas, which is a D1, D2, D3. PD is a small triangle of T1, T2, and T3. Here yeah. is T3. Yeah. Okay. Actually, Dual says uh, invented more than 10 different triangles mm -hmm. for uh, transport oil, OLTC compartment. If the min if there is a not mineral oil, there is a natural history is there, synthetic mm -hmm. history is there. So mm -hmm. different kind of triangle he has invented. I am not uh, memorized exact numbers, but it is more than 10. Okay. And Dual is alive, so he is doing more research on the triangle. Okay. This is the dual triangle example. Mm -hmm. Fault zone is the same we have uh, discussed in abbreviation section. Mm -hmm. So I took the just random number of CH4, C2H4, uh, ethane, and C2H2 acetylene. And I <coughs> calculate the percentage and it. Mm -hmm. This percentage is uh, lie between this T3 section. Mm -hmm. So it, I found out the fault level is the T3, which is the thermal fault greater than 7 degrees Celsius. Okay. So that's it for the interpretation method. Okay. Failures are there, which is, it cannot be detected by DGA. Mm -hmm. Like continuous failure that cannot be prevented. If your transformer is running healthy, mm -hmm. and some system in your, in your substation there is short circuit, mm -hmm. so instant fault will be there. Yes, so yes. you cannot go to the three previous uh, months, three months previous data of DG and analyze dissolved gas. Okay, okay. So any instant pass over with uh, any instant uh, image you cannot capture by DGA. That yes, kind sir. of failure is not predicted by GA. Then second is a serious failure. Developing within seconds or not, you can say it is again it's instantaneous failure. Yeah. Which is not detectable by DGA. Okay. This is the fault which can be detected by DGA that uh, if it is fault is your within winding, your paper is damaged or some discharge between your paper mm -hmm. in cleats and in connect connection. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, what happens, some void will occur in the structural part of tank, it causes parcel discharge, that can be detected by DGA. Okay. Then in selector switch, core, the core material, some rust is, rusting is there, that can be possible. In sorting of the, what happens in core, sometimes burst is found on the surface of the lamination. Yes, yes. So it sorts the two lamination, in, it, it will again do chemical reaction because of the high eddy current. Yeah. Circulating current. And yeah. then failure of bolt insulation. Yes, yes. So these are the basic classifications that can be detected by DGA, which is uh, your winding, cleats, leads. And the uh, structural part, selector switch, and the core, CRG materials. That's it. Yeah. And, uh, these are the typical value of gas concentration for the healthy transformer. Mm -hmm. You can say one or two year old transformer. Okay. 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 So uh, this is this limit is given by two different St standard IEEE IEC. And that uh, is IEC 57.104 and IEC 60599. Yeah. So hydrogen is 100 ppm and the unit is ppm for the limit. Yeah, yeah. And IEC is given if uh, your hydrogen is 50 to 150, then your transformer is healthy. If your transformer is a new, newly just manufactured and not commissioned, then IEC said your hydrogen should be 50. And yeah. after one or two or three years of operation, it goes up to 150, then there is no issue. 
you cannot say it is abnormal it is normal yeah then methane i triple a said limit should be 120 ppm and uh, ic said it is 30 to 1130 for a new transformer healthy transformer uh, in plant transformer it should be 30 and after some years of use up to 130 ppm it is fine okay in one acid linkage one one thing equals here i triple a values are is this maximum or minimum values it is a maximum values if it is goes beyond 120 is abnormal okay 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 yeah. we should not go beyond that yeah yeah okay. really should be i triple a limit yes it that is upper limit yeah that is upper side limit yeah yeah for say then acetylene it is acetylene is 1 ppm and ic has given it is 2 to 20 ppm so there mm-hmm. is a huge uh, difference between this because uh, one is very small yeah But in yeah. case of acetylene you have to take note if acetylene should be up to as per my experience if it is it should be less than one i don't know why i see as uh, given 2 to 20 yeah But acetylene is if more than 2 then there is some kind of arcing is there minor arcing but uh, some arcing is there yeah so as i think acetylene should be less than 2 or 1 yes 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 because that is main fault indication arc indication yeah exactly yeah if some minor arcing not if, uh, visible by uh, we can by i but if some minor corona the blue light is there mm 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 then then only this value goes beyond 1 1 or 2 okay okay so you can say acetylene is a key gas for arcing and it should be always be notable yes 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 we can if uh, you do dca at uh, first 3 month and you found acetylene is 0.5 ppm and after 6 month you found it is 1 ppm okay that is fine but again you do analysis at uh, next 6 month half 6 month over rule Mm-hmm. and then it is it is 1.5 yeah then you have to note down this graph because it is increasing exponentially 0.5 then 1 then 1.5 yeah if some minor arcing or uh, corona discharge is there then only value this, this value is goes beyond 1 yes then ethylene pH4 i triple e has given a 50 and ic has uh, given 60 to 180 Yeah. So for healthy transformer, uh, limit should be 50 to 60 ppm, and after one, two, or three years of use, up to 280, you can say it is normal. There is no need to do worry. any further analysis or shut down. There is no yeah. more worry. Yes. Yeah, okay. Same methane is 65, and IEC said 20 to 90. Carbon monoxide, 350 ppm. IEC said 400 to 600 ppm. Yeah. Carbon dioxide, which is a uh, 2500 and uh, there is again huge difference iec said it should be in between 3800 to 14000 mm-hmm. okay but what i suggest if the value of the gas is goes beyond the i triple e i triple e is a lower limit comparatively yes. iec yes yes sir what standard says your value should be within this iec limit so there is no need to go for a further interpretation methods like sigre or a dual triangle but yeah. what i have observed in my experience if your values is beyond i triple e i see said it is 150 for hydrogen and i triple e said 100 but if found 120 ppm then it is better to do interpretation go with interpretation there is yeah. a dual zone zero here yeah that's good as per standard it is not required if customer said then we can say it is okay but uh, for our uh, satisfaction we have to go for interpretation further interpretation yes yes for we can a, we can analyze yes yes yeah you can analyze yeah this uh, same i have copied from i iec that mm-hmm. i have already discussed the iec has given one beautiful chart that uh, what should be the rate of rise ppm mm-hmm. per year mm-hmm. you can say after 5 years h2 some stray gases is there as we discussed h2 will be produced by default if there is no fault but you use transformer for 5 to 6 years mm-hmm. and uh, there is in case some overload is required by utility 
the overload the transformer at the time of overload temperature goes the beyond designed value yeah. so during that uh, one or two hours period some gases will be formed and once a minor amount of gas will be formed it go for chemical reaction and it produce exponentially mm-hmm, mm-hmm. so this is the ppm range per year you can say 90% typical rates of gas increase observed in power transformer this ppm mm-hmm. per year these gases increase in this uh, numbers per year yeah okay and uh, final conclusion yeah we get to take away there is a numbers of techniques for a condition monitoring or preventing preventive maintenance but dj is much more established and popular because it first it is a ndt non destructive test you yes, don't you, you do not have to shut down your transformer for the interpretation so it is a very much safe and uh, because of this it is very much popular yeah it is a dj is a science or an art that is comes by experience of 5 to 6 years or by analyzing numbers of the transformer thousands number of the transformer yes 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 is a sent the third point is if you do one analysis at a, after 6 month you go with the cpri then dj is not useful it is a very sensitive test if uh-huh. you if you are going with ada or any pgcl or any other laboratory you have to follow only one laboratory okay okay really it has to be done in the same laboratory with same equipment okay dj equipment should be same for every 6 or 3 month uh, interval and mm-hmm. the lab will also be same okay because it may not consistent if we change the yeah exactly. okay and i think the people who taking oil or uh, the people who also experienced person and uh, you can mm-hmm. say mm-hmm. it mainly defined for dj oil sample because it also matters how you take took the sample yeah at the time of sample taking it exposed with the air or sunlight then also your transport is healthy but uh, when you took the sample sample are healthy yeah yeah but uh, some air gases from the atmosphere will come at the time of taking the sample yes 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 that's true bench marking at the time of commissioning initial well value should always be taken but nowadays i think it is a common practice for all the utility or private sector yeah they always uh, go dga before uh, commissioning yes 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 and uh, history of transformer should be captured and documented you found that uh, ethylene is there in your transformer so in that case you have to go with the uh, loading cycle of the transformer if customer mm-hmm. has over pretty transformer mm-hmm. it is some commercial term if it is in guarantee period and there some gases is come inside transformer and customer ask us yeah my transformer is guarantee and still it is uh, within one year it showing it thailing my transformer yeah in some cases what happen our transformer is healthy but the operating operator or transformer operator is uh, overloaded it beyond our name plate Yes, yes, yes. That's true. Transformer quality is a uh, customer is loaded it beyond its limit. So it obviously its temperature will increase and uh, ethylene will be formed inside mineral oil. Yeah. So to cross check history of the transformer should be captured always. Mm-hmm. Yes, yes. Uh, your transformer is healthy. Then you have to. just define frequency at after 3 month of interval or 6 month of 6 month is a uh, better for normal transformer you always go with uh, dg at every 6 month yeah that would be good yeah yes and uh, at the time of taken uh, sample what happened some customer took the sample from the top they found some higher gases and they are worried and comes to us there are higher gases and but uh, there is what we suggest when you take the sample sample should be from top bottom and oltc compartment mhm dga always should be done for top oil bottom oil and oltc compartment 
Okay. So it is better to analyze its graph. Yes, yes, that's true. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, even some degasification, it is uh, for use to transform. It is late. Mm -hmm. Then there is a uh, numbers of methodologies are there. Methodologies or interpretation methods are there. Like I said, IC, I triple E, ABB, Kima, yes, and yes, Roger, Tigre yes. all have developed their own method. Yes, yes, yes. So we should not be laying on one common particular one method. If uh, your gases are beyond uh, defined limit, hydrogen is more than 200, acetylene is more than num uh, 2 or 10, then you go with IEC analysis, then SIGRE analysis, then uh, Rogers method and comes to result. Yeah. You do it in IEC and say there is a low energy fault. That's it. That is actually not right practice. Yes, yes. You have to cross the uh, numbers of method or 3 to 4 method at least, 2 to 3 method at least. Yeah, that gives good understanding. That's true. Our methods will be used to interpret some result. No yeah. single method is capable of. Uh, sorry. Yes, yes. universal is. That's it. Yeah. And uh, that's the last bit of my. This is what I'm talking about. My software I have invented. Mm -hmm. Here you can say in first. Are you able to see this video? Yeah, it's better if you if you are able to rotate it. Please watch part two of this video for continuation. I hope you enjoy this content. If you are watching this video for the first time, please subscribe to my channel. So press on the bell icon so that you don't miss any of uh, my future videos. You will get notifications also. Thank you. Thanks for watching.